Hello crafty cuties, welcome, welcome to a very exciting video. So in this video, I am going to show you all of the steps for how I made this fully dressed junk journal. The only thing I don't go in detail is decorating the pages, but I will have a future video going over decorating pages, and I do show filling up the book so that you can see the different types of pages that I decorated. We have a lot to go over, so let's jump right in. I'm going to quickly go over supplies. So you will need your front and back cover. I'm using recycled book board from Dollar Tree Books. And these measure five and a quarter inches by eight and a half inches. You're gonna need something for your spine. I like to use recycled chipboard or cardboard um, that I get from the backs of my paper pads. I'm using four layers here. And this measures two and a half inches by eight and a half so you'll need it the same height as your books. And then I like to use something called newsprint. It's a really thin, almost construction paper. And this is 12 inches by 19 inches. This is going to be one of the layers that we cover our book in. And then I like to use fabric, and you do not have to use fabric, but it's just my preference. And this piece is 10 inches by 18 inches. And especially if you don't have card stuff, this, sorry, this newsprint here, you can use something like copy paper um, and you can basically like you can see these are two pieces so if I were using this I would adhere these together right here in the middle with a strip of um, like double-sided tape so that I have one big sheet to work with just to make it convenient and another idea is if you didn't want to use fabric you could just use two pieces of um, whatever paper you're covering your books into so let's get into it so I'm gonna start building the spine of my book. Now, if you have a really heavy chipboard, you can skip this step and you don't have to adhere layers together, but I'm going to be using my one and only Tombow Mono Aqua Glue. You'll see that I use this for all parts of this. And so basically I'm just making a thicker spine because this cardstock alone is not heavy enough, but this glue also dries hard. So if you are doing this step, um, you should let this dry in between. Obviously for the sake of the video, I will just keep going on. So again, you if you want to use some very heavy chipboard, you can skip this step, but I like to use as many recycled pieces as I can for this. So now we have the spine of our book and our two covers ready to go. So this is the newsprint that's down here and I'm going to start by adhering the spine down just somewhere in the center of this paper. and. Basically, I'm just going to cover this. You can use a brush if you want to um, make sure that the glue is smooth all the way across your surface, but I am usually working quite fast and I just find that to kind of be an extra step that I don't need to do. So I'm going to just go ahead and press that down firmly and I work quick. So then I'm going to completely cover the front and back cover with the glue as well. I'll show you one and then I'll skip ahead for the next because I will be doing the same exact um, thing. Some people have asked me if I use the bottom of this glue. It's like a bigger, um, it's like a sponge tip kind of thing. Uh, for some reason I don't like it. I feel like it puts too much glue out or like not enough. So. I just use my finger, I get messy when I'm crafting. You know, do you do you. <laughs> so here we go. I like to do this just because this paper that I'm using is quite thin and I prefer a um, thinner paper for this step because I like something that's flexible. So you can use regular cardstock. I have just found this to be the easiest. Okay, so for this step, I find that it's very important to leave about a quarter of an inch. I used to actually leave more like an eighth of an inch, like not very much room. And I was finding that I was having trouble um, 
with my paper splitting or with just having the book be flexible to open and close enough because I do like my books to open completely flat since it is a book that you're working in. So I do um, find it to be pretty important, especially for when we are covering the inside. You'll see why I think it's important. So I would say, yeah, about a quarter of an inch is perfect. Okay, so I will be right back after I'm done um, putting this one down. So once you have these glued down, I like to flip it over. And if you are not working really quick, I would do this step um, in between gluing each down. So I like to go over the area. Now I don't find that this glue wrinkles most of my papers. However, this paper is so thin that there can be some wrinkling if you can kind of see on camera there. But once I go through and smooth it all out, it's not it's not anything that I cannot work with. Um, and again, this is the only paper that I really see wrinkling with. And I think this would happen with any glue. Um, but this part will be covered. So it's not anything I'm worried about. I just um, like to smooth it out just in case I put another thinner paper over or if I decide to cover this area with like fabric, then it can look as smooth as possible. So basically I'm just using my finger to smooth everything out and it, I am pressing hard, but at the same time I'm being careful because this paper can kind of um, rip pretty easy since it's so thin. And so I have been getting this paper from Fred Meyer. I've never looked for it at a craft store, so I will try to have a supply list down below with some things um, linked so that you can easily find something similar. But I love it and it's perfect because it is so big. It's, yeah, I'm hoping I can continue buying it. Okay, so. We got that all good. Now we're gonna flip it back over and we are going to trim the corners off. Now, I am not super careful with a lot of my steps, you will see. I don't measure, I don't make things perfect. So I am just going to trim off what I think is good, leaving a little bit of space here. So I will repeat that to all four corners and just make sure to leave a little bit of space there like that's probably about an eighth of an inch but you could cut this just right so that there's no extra bulk when we were folding these sides over but like I was saying I just kind of I do it quick and I don't worry about cutting it just right because you can make anything work okay so now I'm going to go ahead and add glue around the perimeter of this paper. And then I do it kind of just some squiggly lines in between. So all the way around the edges, around the edge where the book is, and then a little bit in between. And I'll continue all the way around. And then you will go ahead and glue these. I like to do the two side flaps first. So just press that down, good and smooth, nice and tight around the edges here. And then for this one, I always like to kind of fold up like that, just so I get a nice crease there. And then fold that over. And in some future tutorials, I will talk about certain things like how to do a curved spine and how to add ridges to your spine. But for this tutorial, I just wanted to keep it very basic, but also give you a heads up that um, I will definitely be going over those things in future videos. And then this one right here. Make sure that your corners are nice and neat. However, I add metal book corners to mine, so I'm not too concerned, again, about them being perfect. So, so for this area in between, you want to make sure to, that um, you kind of press those down into the crease, um, just so that it will stay down there like so. There we go. 
And I like to let this dry for at least 10 minutes or so. So now it's time to cover the other side. Now this is going to be the inside of my book, but for you it could be the inside or outside. It really doesn't matter. Um, okay, so we're gonna cover this side now, and this is what I am using. I am using my fabric. If you didn't want to use fabric, again, you can use whatever you want and follow the same exact steps. So I basically start out by adding glue to my spine a good amount um, and I make sure to get it down in this ridge that we created as well. That is quite important. So again, I'm gonna smooth this over with my finger. Now I'm gonna take my fabric and make sure that I have it even and so that the spine is being glued down to the middle of the fabric. And if you're curious, you can see that I did not like iron my fabric or anything because when we glue it down, it's going to smooth out. You do not need to worry about making sure that it is um, ironed or anything like that. And one other tip is that if you are wanting this fabric layer to be your final layer for your book, um, I definitely would cover this in paper first just because, let me show you, you can see through that there is paper and then cardboard. But I'm going to be covering this like with book cloth. But if you were not, you can definitely keep this as your final layer. Just be sure to cover this in paper just like we did the other side and then do your um, fabric layer. And that's what I would do if I were going to like be painting my cover. So for an example, this one right here is fabric that is painted and so basically what I did was covered it in paper and then the fabric and then painted um, and that's something else so I'll go through in future videos as well like decorating with paint and things like that okay but this one will be covered with some uh, paper I think so I'm going to basically just continue on adding glue to the front and back smoothing it out with my finger and then pulling that fabric over tightly so I'm pulling this last side over. If you're curious why I use fabric as a layer that might be ended up, or that will be um, covered up, number one, I just like the durability that it gives my books. I like the feel. It adds kind of a little bit of a plush feel. Um, and muslin is something that is quite inexpensive, but it's also something that I can always get my hands on. And I like the processes of my books to be um, to flow and to always be kind of something that I can count on. And so having the right supplies, or sorry, not the right supplies, but having supplies that I can always rely on and that are easy for me to get is important to me. So now we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the paper where I trim the corners and then we will uh, glue them over. So I will just cut the corners off all the way around. And if you can see down here, there's not much down here cause I just kinda, I didn't do it very well, but that's totally fine. I can still cut this corner off down here and just leave a little bit to fold over that corner. And again, we'll be covering it with book corners. So it's not a big deal if it's perfect right there. So I'm just folding over this last corner and just make sure that everything is glued down really good. And then I will show you what I do on the front side um, where those ridges are to make everything look nice and pretty. So here we go. So this is the cover of our book. And remember I was saying that it's important to make sure that these ridges are creased down. If you don't like the look of this, you can make sure that you glue your covers a little bit closer to the spine, but I would keep at least an eighth of an inch. And like I was telling you, I've kind of run into issues um, with my books when I do that. So another thing I like to do, you can take um, some kind of a, uh, what am I trying to think? One of those knife things. I don't know what I'm trying to think of and use that to crease this edge, but I simply just use my finger and you can see that by doing that, that's going to give us this really pretty kind of recessed area. I really don't know what you call this. It's a little ridge that you see on most books. I really like how that looks. So um, that is one reason why I like making sure there's enough space. 
but then you'll see again when we cover the inside why it's good to have this area. So now you gotta think about a few things. So now it's time to decorate your cover. I have another piece of muslin that's going to cover the inside. This is not necessary if you are going to be covering it with paper, but I just like the extra layers. I'm just extra like that. I have a scrap piece of cheesecloth for the spine. And then I do have um, some sari silk. This is from Swoon Fibers, gorgeous. And I have this long enough to go all the way across the book. I'll show you when we get there. This is about 30 inches long. And then I have my front and back covers complete and decorated. And they are just about a quarter of an inch smaller than the cover. And then I have my inside covers decorated as well, just again, to save some time. And again, they are about a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around. And then I have a pretty piece of paper for the spine. I have my charm and tassel ready to go, which I have a full video on making these. So I'll set those aside because that'll be the last touch. And then I have in here, I like to set aside all of the hardware and things I need for the covers, the decorating part um, when I get started. So then I have my metal book corners. I have a ring fastener for the charm. And then I have my uh, supply of scissors, glue, my crocodile, and a ruler. Okay guys, so order is very important. The order that we um, do the certain steps for decorating the cover. So we are going to start out with punching a little hole in the middle of the top of my spine here. And I just wanna make sure that's where I want the top to be. I kind of just look over and see which front looks prettier. And I'm actually gonna go with this. And so I already marked a little spot where the middle is and the reason i say that the order that we do the steps in is important is because like we need to start with punching the hole for the charm because if we didn't do that first then we wouldn't be able to cover the inside um we wouldn't be able to cover like the prongs that are going to be on the inside if we had already covered the inside first. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to add a little dot of glue. I always add that just for extra security. And of course, if you were adding a book cloth to the spine, you would also, you would want to make sure you did that first, but I am not doing that on this um, cover. Okay. So now I'm going to add my closure to the inside. And so I'm using this beautiful sari ribbon and I'm going to actually have it go all the way across. I just feel like it's so much more secure. Um, you know, it can't pull out at all. So I'm just adding my glue, just kind of messily here. Messily, is that a word? All the way across here. And then just kind of make sure I have the middle right in the middle and you can flatten your silk or ribbon, whatever you're using down as much as possible. And I always, add, I always add a little extra slack right on where the, where the book will be closing. I, I just don't have words today because you definitely need a little bit of flexibility for when your book is opening and closing. And this is why I, when I'm covering the inside, I don't put one full piece across. I put separate pieces just because I, I don't like messing with needing that slack right where the book um, opens and closes. And it's not as affected at, on the outside as it is in the inside. Okay, so now we have that covered. And so now I'm going to add my pieces to the front cover. So I'm just going to simply glue these pieces on. And I'm using, of course, my Tombow Mono Aqua Glue that I use for everything. If I were covering it with fabric, I would do the same. And I do have a video tutorial on covering a book cover with fabric. So if you want to see how I do that, I, I basically follow the exact same steps as I would for paper. But I know it helps to see. So I'm going to just continue 
gluing the front and the back covers on. One of the reasons I like to um, add the cover first is because sometimes I'm adding metal embellishments that I punch all the way through the cover and I want the backs of those to be covered, um, you know, on the inside. So it just works for me to do it in this order. Okay, so now I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to cover this complete thing with muslin fabric. You can absolutely skip this step. For me, it's just, I guess, another layer of durability. It just kind of holds, I feel like it holds the whole book together. Um, yeah, so I'm going to f cover this whole thing in glue and then just put my muslin down. I will have the video linked below where I do go more in depth on this, but there's literally no secrets. Just covering it with glue and adding my fabric. Remember how I mentioned that you always need a little kind of extra material around these folds just for the slack. So basically what I do to compensate for that is since there is a little bit of space in between the cover, the spine, the cover, that teeny little space, I basically just push the fabric down into that little slot. And you know, if we were using paper, see, paper is not as flexible and it's not as moldable, <laughs> not a word again. Um, so that is why I like to use fabric to cover this part. And, I, and so yeah, that's just, that's what I do. Okay, so now we are going to add our paper. Just kind of line everything up there. And so I'm just going to simply glue these on. And I will be right back after doing so. Alright, I just want to point out that I'm adding some scrap cheesecloth just right down at the bottom of the spine. And I'll give you a closer look here. This is literally just a scrap. And it just kind of gives the illusion of an older book. So I will put a small piece at the top, small piece at the bottom. If you had a longer piece, you could use that. And then I will glue my paper spine piece <laughs> over the top. And we are nearly done with the cover. I'm just getting ready to add the metal book corners. Again, I have a full in-depth video on this if you'd like to see more. I'm just using my pliers to open them up a bit just because they're already kind of tightened down. And I'm just going to add a little dot of glue on the corners, all four corners, and then I will tighten it back up with my pliers. These are very easy to use and they're all different types. You are probably wondering where I got these and I actually got these ones from eBay. Um, they came from China and you get a whole bunch. Uh, but to be honest, I prefer the Tim Holtz um, metal book corners. Recollections also has some, but I will just use these up because I have, you know, ordered them already. They're okay, I just feel like they're a little, I guess, more flimsy. All right, I'm just going to ink up the edges now. I'm just using a pigment ink. Um, you can use archival ink if you want. You can use dye ink. It is up to you. So I'm just going to do this all the way around the edges, especially on the spine since I left this one white or I guess natural colored. Um, I am going to be hanging a charm and um, tassel on the side, so that's why I wanted to leave this one, you know, plain. This is what the cover ends up looking like. Super simple, I just um, went ahead and sewed on a piece of lace, added this metal piece that says Capture Life's Moments, and then the back is just kind of a simple pattern. Um, and the tassel and charm look like this and I will just set these aside and put this on at the very end after we do the binding. Okay, so let's start with the pages. I will quickly go over my formula, which I have gone more in depth in in another video. 
Um, I like to follow this for most of my regular size junk journals. Basically, I do a third of pattern paper, a third coffee dyed paper, and a third other. So that could be anything like an envelope, a bag, plastic sleeves. And so basically I, it ends up being about 10 pages, 10 pages, 10 pages. Now mine's mixed up a bit, so it's not exactly following that formula, but that can help you get started. Um, so I have all of my pages cut down, I have my coffee dyed, and you can see I've already started decorating a couple just because this was a leftover page, but I have things like coffee dyed paper, music sheets, vellum, um, vintage book pages, things like that, and things like doilies and whatnot. So now it is time I decorate the pages. I am not going to be able to show you that all in this video. It would be far too long. However, in the near future, I will have a video fully dedicated to decorating pages. Right now, what I can offer you, I have a separate video showing 10 different page ideas, and I will um, show you what I come up with after I am done decorating and adding laces to the edges. I wanted to show you a couple things that I prep before I start decorating my page. I always set out a little container of tags, ephemera, washi, anything that I've set aside for this theme of journal that I'm working on, even if it's something random but I know I want to include. Um, I have like pre-stamped index cards, pre-made journaling cards, things like that because it's really convenient just to have these things nearby when I'm decorating so I can make pockets or whatever the case may be. I also use this to fill and, you know, tuck in after I'm done decorating the pages. I always talk about these blueprints that I make for my books and uh, a lot of times I will plan out like the covers and things as well and make like a blueprint page. But this is what my page idea blueprints look like for this book. And basically these are just different page ideas that I want to incorporate. I get these ideas from my own books that I make, from videos that I see on YouTube, from Pinterest, from Instagram, from all over, from in my brain, from in my dreams, and I jot them down because otherwise it is way too hard to remember all the things you want to include. So I highly recommend, you know, getting kind of a game plan of what you want to do. So I am going to go decorate and then fill my journal and then we can get to binding. Okay guys, so I am now finished sewing all of the lace on, sewing any of the pockets, um, any of the bags. Basically I went through and I go, I do all of the sewing that I need to do for the pages. This is literally five and a half hours later. So at this point, now I go back through, I go back through every single page and I either add stamping, stenciling, or washi. And again, that's gonna take me usually, I don't know, a couple hours. So I am gonna go do that off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so I did all of the stamping and stenciling, added all the washi that I wanted. So now I'm going to take this big old pile here and put it into three piles, three signatures, so three little booklets basically. And I'm going to divide it up equally and I'm just gonna basically go through here and just kind of play around with it. Um, I like to have a good mixture of sizes. Let me bring you guys back out a little bit. So I will try to, you know, alternate like a full page and a smaller one um, and just different styles. So maybe a full page of wash or uh, <laughs> coffee dye paper here with a doily here. And I try to be pretty mindful of the um, pages that I choose for the very outside because um, especially the first one is going to, you know, it's going to show. So um, I'm actually digging this and this is from an actual um, botanical book. So I already know that I want that on the outside, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to play around with this until I get three signatures. Okay, so I have my final three signatures. They each have around 10 pages each, um, which ends up being about 120 pages. That includes front and back. So now, guys, it is time to bind. 
All right, so let's go over the supplies really quick. I have this little container that holds everything, which makes it convenient since I do this so often. The first thing that I have right here is some waxed linen thread. I get this from Paper Source. It's amazing and it's my favorite. The next thing I have is an awl, and I got that from Paper Source 2, I believe. I have my needle. The only thing that is important here is just to make sure that the eye of your needle is not too big because we don't want to create holes that are too big. And I like using a pretty long needle. The next thing I have are paper clips, and this is what we're going to use to hold all the pages together. Um, I also have a book that I use um, just to place everything on top when I'm punching the holes. And I have graph paper in my little like book binding kit because I'm going to use this to create my guide for where I need to punch holes. To get started, we are going to go through and make sure that everything is just neat and tidy exactly where you want it to be in your signature. I'll do a full flip through of these pages at the end and I can point out some of the ways that I decorate the pages. So for now, we're just going to get on to the binding. I like having envelopes in the middle because it kind of hides some of the binding and I just like the look of it. So now that I have everything where I want it to be, I am just going to take my paper clips and I'm going to hold each side together. I like to place a paper clip on the bottom, on the top, and on the side. This is really going to help out and just keep everything in place, um, especially when you're doing a cross bind. You need the pages to stick together. Um, today I'm just going to show you a very simple um, stitch and I do have a tutorial on cross cross binding or cross stitch binding if you are curious so you can check that out if you would rather do a cross stitch. So now for binding, I'm going to try and be as precise as can be, which means this is going to be pretty long. Okay, so I'm going to start out with some graph paper and I have cut this to be the exact same size as the spine of my book. So you can see here, I know this is not an amazing angle we're at, but hopefully this works. So same size. This is going to be our guide for where we will punch the holes and I will show you how I come up with that. So basically I am having three signatures sewn in um, and so because of that I'm going to find the middle and then I will find the middles of each side so that I have three rows. If you had four signatures you'll need to come up with four equal rows or if you had only two, two equal, equal rows. So graph paper just makes it really nice to have um, super straight and even lines. So I'm going to fold this in half just because that's going to save us from having to use any measuring here and then because I want an additional line on each side of that middle I'm just going to fold each side into the middle line. This is just going to help me out. And then you can decide how many holes you want going up your spine for each signature. Typically, I, you know what, I change it up all the time so I shouldn't say typically. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way. We're just going to do three holes. That just seems to be a good uh, number. So now what I'm going to do is fold this in half the other way so that I can get the middle mark. Now you can make your three holes anywhere along each line. It, it doesn't matter, but it is nice to have them equally spaced since you will be seeing this. And then I'm doing the same thing where I fold up um, each side into that middle. So now it's going to be hard to see on camera, but now I have my fold marks and basically everywhere that the fold marks cross, I'm going to mark a little dot. I'm going to use this pink marker so that you can see on camera better. So now that we have our guide, you can see that each row will be one signature and I have wrote top at the top because it's important to um, make sure that you are using this guide exact on all of the places that we need to bind holes. Okay, so we are going to start out by binding these holes, or sorry, punching these holes into the spine, and then we will punch all of the holes into each signature. 
so here we go. I'm going to use this book as my place to punch the holes into. I like to punch from the inside, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to place this down on the spine of my book here. And you can tape it down if you want. Um, I'm just gonna hold it in place. And I am just simply going to punch a hole everywhere that there is a pink dot. Now, if you don't have an awl, you can use something like a thumbtack or um, some kind of a tool, like whatever, whatever you have that can punch holes will work. And of course, I know it can be maybe intimidating to um, do this, to punch holes, you know, through the spine of your book, just because it's permanent. <laughs> but you can always cover the spine of your book. If you are not happy with how it looks after you um, punch the holes and bind your book, you can cover it with lace or you know fabric or book cloth afterwards. So just keep that in mind. You can, you can cover up anything. There is literally no mistakes that can happen in a junk journal. A junk journal is not supposed to be a perfect thing Okay, so I will just continue on here, and then I like to just go back through the holes a second time when I remove this guide, just to make sure that everything is punched really well. So you can kind of see, I have the holes there, so I'm gonna just go back through each one and just make sure I'm gonna punch this through all the way, because I want my needle to fit through these holes just very smoothly. So you can see what it looks like on the outside and you can see why it is important to try to get things very straight and um, even. But if you can see this hole right here, it's like up a little bit and that's okay. Honestly, once everything is in place, it's not going to be a big deal. Just try your hardest to get it looking nice. So on to binding the holes. I keep saying binding, punching the holes through these signatures, I'm just going to grab one of the signatures. We're going to use this same page as our guide. I'm gonna basically use the middle set of holes here and make sure that your top is going to be at the top of your signature. And then I'm going to just place this in the middle of the book. And again, you can tape it in place if you want. Make sure that your pages are all down um, as much as possible like make sure that there's not any like gaps in between the pages and then you can start punching your holes. And then I'm going to just repeat this on all of the signatures and then we can start sewing them in. So now it's time to cut our string and I'm going to cut two times the length of my signature three times, so one of these will be for each signature. We're just going to be doing a very simple pamphlet stitch for this journal. So go ahead and we are going to start binding these in with the last one first. So make sure that you have your journals in the order that you want them to be and then grab the very last one. Go ahead and take one of the strings here I would rather have too much string than not enough. And thread your needle. We're just going to thread it single, but obviously have a little bit extra hanging so that it won't fall off the needle. And then I have a little piece of washi tape I'm just gonna set aside so we can use that to secure the end of the string as we will not be knotting it. Okay, so here we go, guys. Let's open our books and I hope that this viewpoint is okay for you guys. I'm going to start by threading my needle through the top hole and that's going to go through the signature and then also through the spine of the book on the last row since we are working with the last signature. And just go ahead and thread it from the inside to the outside and I'm going to pull that through just enough to have a little piece left and I'm going to tape that in place with my washi tape so that it's easy to pull up. Let me bring you in a different view. So now that we are on the outside of the book, go ahead and make sure to pull your string, not too tight so it doesn't fall off the washi, but tight enough so you know it's good in there. And then we're going to thread in to the second hole 
And we are going to go back in the second hole of our signature. You can tighten this up and you'll find that it is going to move around some um, as we are threading it in, but try to keep it all as tight as possible. And now that we're in the middle hole, tighten things up and then, oh, that didn't go through the envelope. That's gonna happen sometimes. You can either pull it back through or if it's just one layer, you can simply just guide that back through so that we are all the way in the middle. And now we're going to go back out, not back out, we're going to go out the bottom hole and we're going to go out the bottom hole in the spine as well. So, and just kind of watch everything because the strings can get tangled up. So it's kind of something that you're gonna have to work with to find the best angle for you. And then go ahead and now we are going to do our last stitch and that is back in through the middle. So you will go through the middle twice and then back in through the middle there. And then now it is time to tie off. So I like to take my little washi off here and take the needle off. And you can see we'll have a little bit of extra um, string, which is perfect. That's what I wanted. And now just make sure that everything is pulled very tight before you tie off. And there are different, definitely other ways to do a pamphlet stitch. You can start in the middle and then go up to the top hole and then down to the bottom hole and back in the middle. Um, this is just usually what I do. I don't think about it. So uh, don't feel that there is just one way to do this. There are just so many different ways and you will find what works best for you and what's most comfortable for you. Um, but this is a good starting point, I think. Um, just going top to bottom seems like an easier um, way to think about it. And then tight that, there we go. Okay, so now it is time to tie, uh, sew in our second signature. So I'm going to just repeat that same exact steps there. Going to thread the needle. Always do a double check to make sure that you have the top of the signature at the top of the book. <laughs> okay, go ahead and go through the top hole. Sometimes um, you have to push a little bit harder to get through if any of your pages have shifted. Just make sure that you are punching it through where it's supposed to go and not through like a new hole. Okay, and then we will go to the outside. Leaving a little space in here. Tighten that down with some washi tape. It's a lot of opening and closing the book for sure. And you'll notice some of my strings are kind of getting in the way, but they're, they're not there permanently. In through the middle. And you'll see how that's kind of loose. It's just bound to happen, so especially when you're on your first stitch. It helps me to open the signature up to the middle when I'm pulling this through. And then we're going to go down the bottom hole to the back. And back in through the middle and tie off. And then I am going to obviously repeat this for the last signature and we will be done with binding. Very simple. Just needs practice. I know sometimes it can be intimidating, but it really, really is simple. It just takes time. And so be sure to really tighten that up well. So tie this off. I'm going to bind in the last signature and we will come back and fill our book up with goodies. So just a couple things I wanna point out. One is that I always double knot when I am done tying off. The second thing is that when I am binding through one side of an envelope like so, what I do next is I keep the longer string hanging down. So it's just going 
right down this edge right here because I like to hang beads and things off of the edge there or sorry off of the bottom but what I will do is adhere this side down the flap because this is going to um, hide this and I don't mind the the thread showing I like it but when I am trying to disguise it with an envelope. And if you want to use some washi tape to kind of hold the string down as well, you can do that. Um, I sometimes do, but I'm not going to right this minute. And then you can see that this envelope, I actually opened up on this side and that's how you will access using it as a pocket. So now I will just go through and take all of the paper clips off and you are basically done. So I know I didn't show you a big part of the journals, which was the decorating. Um, like I said, I will have to make a further video that is just decorating the pages because, I mean, I spend uh, most of the time on decorating the pages. That will have to be an entire video. Um, I also need to do a lot of pre-planning for that because I kind of just decorate and come up with the ideas as I go. Um, but what I will do is I will show you me filling up this journal right now and we'll kind of probably do it on fast, fast mode so that you can get a better look at each page and what the different um, ideas I came up with for decorating. So for the filling up process, I usually go through the book like three times. The first time I'm going to go back through, see if I want to add any stamping, any stickers, or any rub-ons. And then the second time is when I'm filling it with ephemera. And I have this that I already showed you that has a bunch of things I want to include. Um, I have things like pre-sewn little mini books, pre-sewn um, ephemera like this, so that all I have to do is put it in. Um, now this the way that I fill my books, you know, this is unique to how I make my books and this is unique to what my books, what I want them to look like. They're super full and extremely detailed. That does not mean that you need to do this with your books. It's not necessary for a junk journal to have some type of um, detail on every single page. That's just something that I like to do and something that I find fulfilling when I'm making a junk journal. So keep that in mind. This is not necessary. This book would be extremely gorgeous as it is just like this um, and even less decorated. It's all about finding your style. You can use my style as inspiration and you know some motivation to get started but in the end you're going to need to kind of find what works for you so I'm just gonna kind of start going through page by page I'll probably add some lace right along here just to kind of disguise this area not necessary but it's just something that I will probably do now one more thing that I want to point out before filling this up is that I also have these little drawers that have all of my clips paper clips um, anything that can clip things on in here so that I can just easily reach in there for um, any of those that I need. So now it is time to fill this baby up.
right guys so I couldn't film the whole process of filling this up because it does take me just way too long that the video file would be way too long so now that this is all filled up you can see how full it gets, but I have the closures to tie it shut. And I really hope that this was helpful to you guys. Um, I always send extras with all of my books, so I'm just showing you that this is basically what was left over in the pile of stuff that I um, definitely wanted to include, including different clips, tags, and just a bunch of things that the recipient can use their self. And so I am just going to put that in a little glassine bag here to send on the side. Let me know if you have any questions below. Please know again that I will have some more junk journal tutorials. I'll show you how to make a curved spine. I'll show you more in decorating the pages and things like that. And if you want to see a full flip through of this book, I'm going to actually do that on a separate video so that I can go more in depth and detail. And I will see you guys in the next video.